When you work for others, you are at their mercy. They own your work. They own you. Your creative spirit is squashed. What keeps you in such positions is a fear of having to sink or swim on your own. Instead, you should have a greater fear of what will happen to you if you remain dependent on others for power. Your goal in every maneuver in life must be ownership. Work in the corner for yourself. When it's yours, it's yours to lose. You're more motivated, more creative, more alive. The ultimate power in life is to be completely self-reliant, completely yourself. The most expensive thing we spend is time. Because we can't get it back. Before I had money, when I'm poor, when I'm in the middle, when I'm rich, regardless, I've been on each one of those portions of the journey. Right. I had fun. When we didn't have no money, we had it was fun. It shifted. It's either when you get hurt that bad, you either get consumed to it, you'll become a bit insensitive, and you'll start to approach the problem instead of run from it. You know what my grandfather told me? You don't get as far as the mother you talk to for no reason. You'll be successful as a mother that you talk to for no reason. What I mean is, if you're spending your day talking to a nigga that ain't got nothing going on, what the f kind of information can he offer you? Can he help you learn something? Can he teach you something in the conversation? When losing's not an option, then you gotta do everything possible to win. Like, and I don't understand how they become complacent and feel like, oh, it's okay. You know, you get people that deal with things by not actually dealing with them. You ever seen a rich one start to fight? When you don't no, well off, don't start to fight. He did, he's just having a good time. He's part of, they got battles. Right. Right? The you start to fight is not doing as well. Only just three niggas is the picture. A rich nigga, you got tough niggas, and they can easily become collateral damage. Do you want to feel like you're afraid all the time? Or do you start to become the aggressor? And you start saying, you know what? You ain't got to find me because I'm looking for you. And then it changes everything. Because at that point, I'm the person looking for you. Now, you don't give me all the controls because I got the buttons. I could just push them. Everyone is not actually going to be prepared to, to take the time to actually utilize the information that's given to them. If you pay attention and you actually keep whatever information is coming in front of you, that you choose what's valuable. But the things that you do here that are valuable, if you make it your business to keep it, even if you have to write it down, so you have to say it to yourself or whatever, and you just keep, the person says something and you go, what, what did you just say? Oh, it's like, put it in my phone and hold on to it until it becomes a part of you and the way you actually would express yourself at different points. And then it'll, you develop a more advanced presentation and I got that from Robert. They don't care about me. Is it okay for me not to care about people that don't care about me? It would be entertaining for them to see me in crisis. Why would you see you under the worst circumstances you could be under? I had to convince myself that I'm gonna make it. You know, regardless of how people felt at that time. And what it does is it makes you feel like, well, it made me feel like there's gonna be points that people are gonna mistake my confidence for arrogance. They don't understand the process of it and how much I had to believe in myself in order to make these things happen. I never, ever, I never ran from anything because I didn't have nobody to go to. I always had that, where I'm going? Home to get me? Ain't nobody there. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's, I've always been in a situation where I'm forced to deal with it myself, so. The most expensive thing we spend is time. Because we can't get it back. Before I had money, when I'm poor, when I'm in the middle, when I'm rich, but regardless, I've been on each one of those portions of the journey. I had fun. At each place? When we didn't have no money, we had fun. It was fun. Almost 90% of the time, I'm communicating with people who've achieved a higher level of education. Right, the college graduates. You know, if the information that you needed in the business classes were, if everything you needed was in the book, then the teacher would be too successful to teach the class. Find something to, to fall in love with, something to be passionate about, right? And then because you enjoy it so much, you'll be able to do it so much that you become so good that everybody's going to love and appreciate you. I think depression is a luxury because where I'm from, you can't afford to be depressed. You got to pay the bill, right? So you gotta go to work. You gotta get up. You gotta go do what you gotta do. They got people right now that's at work don't feel like being there. But they got responsibilities, so they, yes, feel, they feel uncomfortable while they're working, while they're doing what they gotta do. I grew older. The one thing that becomes clearer to me each and every day 
is that I don't owe anyone a thing, and neither do you. I've seen a lot of people pollute their potential after sipping from the well of entitlement. This is certainly true of many of the people I've been associated with over the years, even my own son. What they need to understand is that you should never feel like the world owes you anything. It doesn't. You must accept that it's all on you. That might seem like a very cynical way to view the world, but I would argue that it's actually liberating. You can only feel betrayal when you feel like you're owed something from someone. You can only feel resentment when you had expectation for assistance. When you accept that it's all on you, only then can you finally be free to focus 100% on being the best version of yourself. Either I'm going to get rich or I'm going to die in the process. I'm going to do what I want to do. And then if, if I die in the process, it's what I want to do. Get rich or die trying. I don't try to have you You know what I'm saying? Like, because when they fall apart and you have no idea, like, what was the motivation, it says that you don't have to be involved for it to fall apart again. I think the things you go through make you who you are. So I don't regret those things. I don't regret them because I don't think I'd be who I am today if I wasn't exposed to the situations. If you ask me what I, uh, those are unfortunate situations that I've had to experience. If I had a choice, I would have definitely went in a different direction. I might have wanted to go to school for business instead of having to go through that, this portion of my life. No matter what, what group of people, whether it's your actual blood relatives or, or people that you develop relationships over time that create a value. There's points where some of them develop a sense of entitlement, and it can't be. They get blinded by what you've done and say, they're consistently saying, look what you have, versus acknowledging what you've already done. Hey, I come from hustling, but like, that's what it was, what it was about. If there was no financial motivation to it, we wasn't really involved. Now the things that they're doing is a little different. Like, the little homies will tell you, hey, you ain't got no bodies. I think the only thing that separates people with passion. And Having a, the ability to focus on something, on the work on it, will allow you to work hard enough to be good enough. That's the Kobe Bryant, bro. He outworked people. A lot of people in the league perform according to their paycheck. Ain't getting that money, let them do it. And that's right. what separates him and makes him special to us in a different way, even after he's gone. Never happens on your time, but when you think you're ready, it's supposed to happen. It always happens when it's supposed to happen. Because the period that you feel ready and People are not acknowledging the material the way you feel like they should because it's good. It's the time that you actually develop skin thick enough to survive when it does work. If you spend your day talking to a nigga that ain't got nothing going on, what the f kind of information can he offer you? Can he help you learn something? Can he teach you something in the conversation? I wanted to bring everybody with me. So not, not be someone new, be a better version of what I already was, but like you want to do the same thing. They want to shoot dice. They want to have the same argument. They want to do the same thing that we did that. You know what I mean? It's just circumstances. It puts you back under the same circumstances when you already move to a different level. Like, I don't mind losing. I just like to lose at my expense. At, let it be my fault. If I'm losing based on someone else's decision to do it, I'm, I'm furious about it. I was afraid and I was uncomfortable with being afraid. It's either when you get hurt that bad, the your fear consumes you, or you become a bit insensitive and you'll start to approach the problem instead of run from it. I try not to, to surround myself with people that I have to be defensive around. You know, and that is a defense mechanism. Like, the anger is a more comfortable feeling to deal with than having your feelings be hurt or a person did something, you, you being disappointed in the, the, the decision to do certain things. Like, you know, like some of these guys, they're going to roll with anybody that will embrace them. Anybody that will just be in every circle, period. I'm like... I'm not really comfortable with that. Like, imagine if you say, yo, my man is over here, Sean man over here at the Western, I'm going to go pull up on him. And you go over there, and then you run right into somebody who got a problem with you. And you all off balance because you were just going, you weren't prepared to, to see Sean man, yeah. not prepared to run into, the, you know, these people. And then you have problems. That's why I don't usually communicate or associate. If a person's on the gate, I kind of put them on the other side. So I don't put leave myself on them because of that. You know, I had to convince myself that I'm going to make it, you know, regardless of how people felt at, the, at that time. And what, what it does is it, make, it makes you feel like 
before it made me feel like there's going to be points that people are going to mistake my confidence for arrogance because I've had to, they don't understand the process of it and how much I had to believe in myself in order to make these things happen. I kind of, I feel like you can will yourself into a good space. Things that are meant to happen will, and if you believe in yourself enough, you can help yourself learn. You can inspire you know, yourself in different ways where you can actually discipline yourself, you know, to the point that you can become good enough.